Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast, featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Axe Ministry. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast with Pastor Frank and Lady J. We're so glad you joined us on this wonderful, wonderful January <laughs> Sunday <laughs> of the new year. We're glad you're joining us and returning um, to the broadcast for today. We'll continue our theme beginning with a new year, the, the beginning of a new year. How so, to start that year off right. Start, how to get it started, what to Let's do, get what, started. We, what we need to do, what we need to not do. Amen. <laughs> but starting the new year off, um, the beginning of a new year. And you know, Sometimes starting off is, is, is difficult. Whenever yes, you start yes, something new, whenever yes. you do something that you haven't done before, it takes um, a little bit more effort. It takes some practice. It takes some determination. It takes a mindset change. It takes um, some umption and some gumption and some, it just takes a little bit more fortitude to get to doing a new routine or, or getting out of an old routine to do something new. And you know, God gives us an, ex he gives us a pattern. He gives us a pattern. Uh, how to do it. it gives us principles and see principles are uh, these are timeless principles he's going to give us and in Exodus chapter 12 that whole chapter 42 verses you know if you if you look at it spend time reading it as we're looking at this and and uh, what God is saying to Israel how he changed the months mm -hmm. when he brought them out of Egypt he said I want this month to begin the year for you I want this month to be a time of celebration, a time of thankfulness, a time where you remember I brought you out of slavery. So it's, it's being totally free in 23. You know, how do we do that with these principles? And so he gives us this. It was, it was mm -hmm. 10 plagues, and this is the 10th plague. So he gives us some examples and some principles. And I love what you said on, on last week that joining forces, if your house is too small, joining forces, understanding the power of unity, understanding the power of touching and agreeing and having somebody hold us accountable and to work with and to move forward. Yes, yeah, so we read in the scripture last week in Exodus chapter 12, um, the main two verses, one and two, where God changed their year, their calendar year for them. So they were in the 10th month and he changed it to the first of the year for them. So it, it's a feeling of, okay, if you're used to all your life having 12 months in your year, and then all of a sudden your, your last two months are cut off, those things that you normally did in those last couple of months, then you're, you're resetting, you're restarting, you're rebooting, and not waiting until those two months are over with, sometimes you can feel like you lost something. Sometimes you can feel like, you know, you, you, got, you got rid of something, and sometimes we have to um, cut our losses. Sometimes we have to stop in the middle of something that's not working, something that hasn't been working all our life, and restart, reboot. Um, our electronic devices, our phones, our computers, our tablets, our microwaves, our whatever has an electronic device in it, sometimes we have to restart it, even if we have to unplug it. Yes. Yes. To start it over again so that it can catch up and it can restart and it can get to the place where it can be utilized more, e more effectively and more efficiently because we have rebooted, we have restarted, we have recharged, we have um, rewinded, we have, there's a, there's a point in all our lives that we need to examine where we've been so that we can move forward. But in order to move forward, we had to cut some things short. We have to right. restart some things. We have to start all over again. And that's what this year, talking about beginning of the new year, we are starting all over again. Amen. Well, amen. And that's good. That's good. We get a fresh start. Get a fresh start. You get to build on what you, all the positive things, but you get a fresh start in those areas where we need to start. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that these principles it's a pattern, just like the Lord said, when you pray. He didn't say pray like that. He gives us a pattern, a mode of prayer. Same thing here in Exodus. 
exited out of certain things. And, and the one thing, when I look at this, when I look at these 42 verses in Exodus chapter 12, uh, this pattern, this blueprint that he has given unto us, Passover. That's why we want to start the new year off with the Lord's Supper. You know, the Bible says Jesus is our Passover. Because if you start with the Lord's Supper, and he says, as often as you do it, you do show forth my death until I come. It's, a, it's understanding the past. It's understanding where you are. And it's understanding where we're going. So to start the year off with remembering what Jesus did for all of us. Because all of us, at some point, some place, we were in a Egypt. We were in a place of slavery in a place of bondage, uh, maybe not physically, but emotionally, spiritually, uh, we were in a place. So, so, so now, you know, our watch meeting service, uh, we call it watch meeting service. And we'll, you know, when we, when we did watch meeting service, we, we had that communion starting it off at uh, the beginning of the service. Mm -hmm. So we had communion in there so we can start from that point. Wow, what a point to start from, yes. as often as you do it. So this is, this is what is happening with them. The beginning of the year, Passover, that lamb, but Jesus made it clear that this is my body. <laughs> he is our Passover. Yes, he is. He's our Passover lamb. Yes. And he shed his blood for us. Amen. So when we get under the blood of Jesus, we are just like the children of Israel when they were coming out of um, bondage and coming out of Egyptian slavery, when they were coming out of Egypt, they had to put the blood on the doorpost and on the two lentils. And, and the, when the destroyer came through the land, the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now Jesus has become our great Passover lamb and he was slain before the foundations of the world so that when you and I come up under the blood of Jesus in 2023, when we're up under, stay up under the blood, when we stay yes. in the house, remember they told him, do not go out of Don't your house. That. Do not leave this house, if, right. even if there's blood on the doorposts and the lintels, but if you come out of this house, you're not covered. He says, don't come out of the house. Stay, in the, stay under the blood. Stay under Jesus' covering. And when we do this in 2023, the plan that the Lord has for us, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to bless you, plans to prosper you, plans to yes. um, give you good success, plans to, to bring you to know. your expected end. God has plans for us, but we've got to agree with the plans. We have to come in harmony with the plans. We must come in fellowship with God and with his plans that he has for us so that we can have a good beginning of a new year that will propel us and catapult us into the rest of the year with the blessings of the Lord um, and the high hand of God upon our lives. So we're looking for God to show us through the example of the Israelites, show us how he wants to bless us, how he wants to heal us and deliver us and to set us free so that we can be about our father's business in 2023. Amen. So good. So you got to work with us, partnership with us. So read Exodus chapter 12 over and over and over again yes. uh, so you yes. can receive these principles. You know, I said on the last show that most people, they spend more time on their job in one week than they spend at church the whole year. Mm -hmm. So you just think about that. If you, you're, you're there every day, you can work on certain things and keep it going and you got to flow. But if we're coming just only on Sundays, some people, isn't this a pretty, that, that majority that comes on Sunday, we got good Bible class attendance, but some folks come. So even, even that just on Wednesday, you still need to do something in between. So reading Exodus yes. chapter 12, as we give you these principles and we talked about, we talked about verse uh, three and four on, on uh, last week about joining forces. And I, lo I love that uh, joining forces with somebody, somebody to help us meet those goals that we have, somebody to hold us accountable, somebody to work with us, uh, not somebody to, that we can cooperate with, touch and agree with, but there's collaboration. You know, people are able to give you input and be able to talk and move forward in the new year. So we talked about verse three and four, uh, but then he, then he began to tell us about this requirement on, in verse five. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goat. And he says, when you look at that, he's beginning to tell them uh, this very best, the very best that you have 
uh, there's there's requirements that sacrifice. that yeah it's a sacrifice. Yes, we said that on last and, week. And and it's yes. it's not just it's not just anything. Mm -hmm. We're talking about without a blemish, mm -hmm. without a blemish, the very best that you have. So we start the year off and say, hey, I'm gonna put forth my best this year. I'm gonna move forward this year. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna half do it. I'm gonna move forward and. And, and, and move forward in the name of the Lord. So, yeah, sacrifice, very mm -hmm. important. Yes, we um, talked about that sacrifice on last week. It required a sacrifice. The, the word itself means I'm giving something that's dear to me. I'm giving something that, that um, is valuable to me. I'm giving something that this sacrifice means I'm giving something that I really hold dear, that I really um, love, that I really appreciate, that I really value. That's a sacrifice. Amen. Um, and so if we're going to, I said on last week, if we're going to go anywhere in God in 2023, it's going to require sacrifice on our part. And so God has them to do a sacrifice. Um, and it has to be, as you said, it has to be the best without blemish, without spot, no broken bones, uh, a male of the first year. It has to be um, a lamb taken from the goats or the sheep. It has to be um, the best that you have to offer. And as we do our best, I tell people, whatever you do, if you're going to do anything for God, do it to the best of your ability. Don't do it half-heartedly. Don't do it, you know, just because somebody told you to do it. Don't do it because um, people going to ask you, did you do it? Don't do it. Do it with all your might. Anything you do, do it as unto the Lord. Do it with all your might, giving it your best at everything you do. Whatever you put your hand to do, God will bless it when you put your best effort into it. And I said we are workers together with him. He's not going to do all the heavy lifting. He's not going to no. do all the work. We must work together with him. Yes. But one thing I, I noticed in this, this sacrificial meal that they're going to eat, this lamb that's going to be roasted by fire, he gives them detailed instructions on how to cook the lamb, how not to cook it, what to eat it with, what to pair it with. Um, bitter herbs. You're going to eat this in haste. You're going to eat this with the shoes, your sandals on your feet. You're going to eat it with your belt around your waist. You're going to eat it with your staff in your hand. You're going to eat it in haste because you have to have a mindset of being focused. I'm getting out of here. I'm not staying here. I've been here too long. God is getting ready to move me right now. Amen. Move me tonight. Move me at this point. Move me at the beginning of the year. Move me. And I'm not sitting around lollygagging, waiting, playing, jesting with people. I have a mindset that's focused on moving. And when we have that type of mindset, God can move in our lives. It's a sense of urgency. Yes. There's this, this sense of urgency about the year. That is, we're in the year and, and, and a sense of urgency of what he is saying to them. That is a very powerful principle that you are explaining there about how it was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, eat it, with, eat it with your sandals on and ready to go. Right, we're gonna stop right here and take a break and then we're gonna come back on the back side of this break and return talking about the sense of urgency and this haste that must be in our spirits. Amen. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministry in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. And I'm Jacqueline Stewart. We want to invite you to our program.
All right, welcome back. Um, hope you enjoyed those messages on the break. We're going to dive back into this, the beginning of a new year, and we're talking and discussing the children of Israel's um, exodus from Egypt and from heavy bondage and heavy yes. taskmasters. And, yes. And we were going through the scriptures in Exodus chapter 12, and we had got down to the part where we're talking about the sense of urgency and the haste that the Lord told them to eat this Passover meal with. Eat this Passover meal with the mindset of, this is my last night in town. Amen. This is, I'm getting ready to get out. You know, if you're getting ready to catch a plane or you're getting ready to um, catch a bus or the taxi's on the way or something, you know that you have to be ready to go as soon as they arrive, as soon as they get there. And he's you're saying. Not getting ready. <laughs> you, right, you, can't, you can't be just packing. You just can't. They had to be ready, packed, and, and dressed. Yes. Oh, that's important. Dressed yes. to leave. Yes. Not yes. just packed. Yes. But I personally have to be um, dressed and ready to make my escape, to make my exodus, to make my exit out of this place in 2022, out of this place that he that I've been for over 430 years, the place that, that my mama and my daddy and my grandmama and my granddaddy and everybody's been here. But God's saying, I'm fixing to move you from where you are to Amen. a new place, a Amen. better place. Uh, a a delivered place, a yes. place where you are not under heavy bondage and taskmasters and um, you're not being um, suppressed and oppressed and depressed. I'm trying to move you from that. Amen. And when you see that, that sense of urgency, I'm packed. And then that's going to be one of the key words that we're going to look at. We're going to look at time. That's one of the key words. And yes. we'll talk about that maybe uh, in the latter part of this month, either in February. But just time, just that, that 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 sense of urgency says I I I respect time. I'm 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 on time. I'm I'm understanding that sense of urgency. I want to back up first, later okay. to one verse. Okay. Uh, that 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 uh, verse number six, where it says, "Now you should keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month," and we knew it started on the tenth through fourteenth. So there's a time of sanctification. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I didn't get a chance to sanctify myself before the year started. Okay, take some time in January. You say, well, I don't have a week. I don't have two weeks. No, 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 no. Get you a day. If you don't have a day, get, get some hours and sit down and meditate and let, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and begin just think about, um, I need to separate myself, sanctify myself. Have that, have that special place in your house, that, that prayer corner or whatever, where you can go and you can just relax and, and you can just sanctify where there's not the noise or whatever. And he said, well, I don't have a room. Well, use a corner, use a chair. You can use a chair. But they kept this lamb uh, set apart. They put this lamb in a place where it was sanctified. That is such a powerful principle that we sanctify ourselves as we're getting ready to move as we're getting ready to fulfill what God has called us to do. So that's in the, that's in the first month, that's from the 10th to the 14th. So we're in, we're in the month of January, so this is a good time. Use, get, get you some time, make some time where you can spend just, just relaxing and spend some time meditating mm -hmm. on yes. Exodus 12, chapter 12, and just looking on the year ahead and reflecting from the past year. But sanctification is a huge principle and it is a principle today how we need to sanctify ourselves. Get in that quiet place. Be still and know that I am God. Place of sanctification so God can give us instruction and directions uh, for this year. Often we start the month of January off with a consecration of some sort. And whatever your consecration is, I admonish you, if you don't have one, to consecrate yourself because he's going to tell them on the first day of the month, um, at the beginning of this, I need you to have a holy convocation. And even on the last day, I need mm -hmm. you to have a Absolutely. holy convocation. I need you to sanctify yourself. And you're going to help sanctify yourself by getting rid of those things in your household that 
that bread, that, that bread that has leaven. Get rid of the leavened bread, anything that has yeast in it, everything that um, puffs up and everything that rises. Get rid of that. You can still have bread, but it must be unleavened bread. He's saying anything that, that, that produces a rising in your life, anything that arrogance, produces pride. pride and arrogancy and anything that produces that, that mindset of I did this or I can I accomplished this or if it had not been for me and, and I'm the one who did this and I'm the one who does that and I'm anything that resembles being lifted up. He says, get rid. He said, not, not just get out the kitchen. He says, get it out your whole house. Yes. Don't, don't, yes. don't even have it on the premises. Yes. Get rid of those yes. things in our lives yes. Yes. That, that's causing the, the, the rising, that's causing the, the anger, that's causing the mischief, that's causing the sin, that's causing those things in our lives that's not like God. He says, get rid of it. So we're, we're operating and we're working on ourselves in the process of getting ready for this move. It's like moving and going to a new home. It's like moving. It's some things you need to throw away. It's some things that you don't take to the new house. It's some things that you give away to the goodwill, to the salvation army, and it's some things that you just throw away in the trash. Yes. It's some yes, things that you yes. get the garbage men to come and pick up at the curb. He's saying, do not take these things into the new year. Yes. Do not take these things into where I'm trying to transition and move you to. Get rid of those old habits. Get rid of those things that's weighing you down. Get rid of those things that are tying you up, that are keeping you in bondage. Get rid of, you're not going to see Egypt again. You're not going to see those um, pharaohs and those heavy taskmasters again. You're not going to see the whip again. You're not going to see the chains again. You're not going to see the heavy bondage again and the heavy lifting and the things that you were accustomed to to where God is trying to take you. And it's so important to, to just sanctify. It's so important to uh, put those things aside. Some things are not evil. They're not sin. They just can't go. Mm -hmm. They're not sin. Mm -hmm. They're not evil. It's just we can't take that you know, this is this was all right where we were, but it's not where we're going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, some things are all right where you were, and they're not bad or, or evil things. They just doesn't fit where we are going. And the one thing, you know, Israel, the mistake that was made in their thinking, not sanctifying their thinking. So when they got out in the wilderness, they built a golden calf. Now, that calf came from Egypt. That calf was not in the wilderness. That was in their thinking. That was something they was doing in Egypt. So because they didn't set apart and sanctify, we got to leave that. So they got in a lot of trouble in the wilderness out there worshiping something that they brought, not physically, but in their thinking. Mm -hmm. So we want to sanctify even our thinking because as a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is he. Mm -hmm. There are some thoughts that we don't need to think where we're going. There are right. some thoughts right. we need to get rid of mm -hmm. because they're thoughts of poverty. Somebody mm -hmm. said stinking thinking. There are some th thoughts that we have. They worked all right where we were. They will not work where we are going because mm -hmm. he said, I'm taking you to, to a land that flows with milk and honey. Yes. And all the stuff that you used to think and making stuff do, well, that's over with because we're taking you to a whole nother place. Yes, yes. And so he, he lets them know, I need you to focus on where you're getting ready to go. When you, when you know that you've got to make a trip and you know that you're getting ready to move and you're getting ready to go to a different place, you have preparation. And then you, after you make these plans, you prepare, you implement the plans. You have to start implementing because sometimes our problem is not knowing. Yes. Our problem yes. is doing. Yes, absolutely. So in 2023, it's not, it's not a problem of ignorance or a problem of not knowing or a problem of not um, having the information. Our problem is implementing. Our problem is doing. Our problem is knowing how to do the steps that we need to take, putting them in order. Um, God is a God of order. God is a God of details. God is a God of instructions. God is a God. He even tells us, don't take away from my word and don't add to it. He wants us to follow his word to the letter. He wants us to follow it to the T. He wants us to follow his instructions so that we can have good success like he told Joshua. If you're obedient, mm -hmm. 
If you do what I told you to do, even though you meditated on these things, we've got to do the consecration. We've got to do the meditation. We've got, but then we have to implement this thing or it's not still not going to work. We have to do what God is calling us to do. And he's saying unto, to the children of Israel here, he says, now, when you do these things, once you put the blood over the doorpost, when you put it on the lentils, when you stay in the house, when you roast the fire, the, the lamb in fire, when you eat it with the bitter herbs, when you, when you sit down in haste, when you wrap the belt around your waist, when you put the sandals on your shoes, when you put the staff in your hand, when you follow these instructions and you do it, he says, I'm going to deliver you. The destroyer is going to come through the land, but tonight is going to be your last night in town. This is going to be the last night you're going to be in this. You got to tell yourself, this is my last night being here. This is my last day being here. Yes. This is my last time being in this place in, that I've been in. All year long, Amen. I am moving from this place. That focus that you, you got to be focused. You got to be focused and don't let anything deter you or to distract you from where God is getting ready to take you. Amen. It's time to pray. Amen. We want to pray for you and, and we want you to have that relationship with the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. And we hope now this is the third week in January that you've been filled with the spirit and, and, if that has not happened, we want to be, we want to, you to contact us. We want you to know how that to happen. Amen. God is loving you right now because he wants to be inside of you. You are the temple of the living God. All right, First Lady, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, your love. We thank you for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. Until next week. Um, you can connect with us at WTEBroadcast at gmail.com. Just send in your prayer requests and your questions. And you can always connect with our website, xministriesonline.org. We'd love to hear from you. And please join us whenever you're in the vicinity. Join us at either one of our worship services in Conway or in North Little Rock. God bless you is our prayer. We love you with the love of God. Until next week. Amen. God bless you. And 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242.